In this video, we'll talk about the different types of seafood toxins. I don't know why these are so high yield on exams. I think historically exam writers just love to talk about fish. And so when you're studying, you have to sort of be like a marine biologist, but it's ridiculous. It's high yield and for whatever reason, it shows up all the time. So let's just talk about it. In this video, we'll talk about the following toxins, tetrodotoxin, ciguatoxin, and scombroid poisoning, which is sometimes known as histamine poisoning or histamine toxin. So beginning with tetrodotoxin, the mechanism is that this toxin blocks voltage-gated sodium channels. So because we're blocking the part of the action potential that causes depolarization, you get net decrease in depolarization. And so if you correlate decreased depolarization with the clinical features, you will see clinical things that happen when action potentials don't fire. So you'll see paresthesias, decreased reflexes, and generalized muscle weakness. The source of tetrodotoxin is your puffer fish. You don't need to know pictures of fish. As ridiculous as this whole conversation may sound, luckily, we don't have to know about the individual fish. But just know that tetrodotoxin comes from puffer fish, and the mechanism, which is the highest yield part, is decreased depolarization due to blockade of voltage-gated sodium channels. Now, if you're like me and you don't know a whole lot about fish and you don't want to memorize all this nonsense, I try to come up with some stupid mnemonics to help you. So tetro sounds like Tetris. And when I think about Tetris, I think that you need really good reflexes to play Tetris. And that reminds me that in tetrodotoxin, you see decreased reflexes. So I'm like, oh, it sounds like Tetris. You need good reflexes to be really good at Tetris, decreased reflexes. And then I can even take that one step further and ask myself what mechanistically would cause decreased reflexes. And that would be something that causes action potentials to fire less, AKA it would be something that blocks voltage gated sodium channels. So that's tetrodotoxin. The next toxin is ciguatoxin. Ciguatoxin kind of does the opposite. So in tetro, we saw decreased polar depolarization. In ciguatoxin, we see increased depolarization of action potentials. And obviously this is due to opening of sodium channels. So they're very much like opposites if you want to think about it in a very simple way. The source of ciguatoxin are your reef fish. And here's a nice image of a reef fish for those who love fish. Clinical features, the really unique thing for ciguatoxin is the reversal of hot and cold sensations. But you also see heart block, bradycardia, hypotension, and numbness. At the end of this video, I'll have a summary slide and I'll point out the really unique clinical features because that's really what you can bank on if you don't want to memorize all of this information. Now for ciguatoxin, I think cig, like cigarette, and you need to open your mouth to smoke a cig. And so open your mouth reminds me of opening of sodium channels. Open your mouth to smoke a cig, cig for ciguatoxin. Open reminds me of open sodium channels, which equals increased depolarization. So more action potentials are firing. But again, if you're gonna take one thing away from this, know the mechanism and then know that high yield clinical feature reversal of hot and cold sensations. So that's ciguatoxin. The third and final note for you future marine biologists is scombroid poisoning. This is sometimes referred to as histamine toxin or histamine poisoning. And so let's just kind of go through the mechanism here to explain why. So there, there's histidine, there's high levels of histidine in fish. But when fish are not refrigerated or stored properly, the temperature increases. When the temperature increases, you get bacteria that produce something called histidine decarboxylase. And that's an enzyme that converts histidine to histamine. So there shouldn't be a lot of histamine normally, but in the setting of high temperature and in the setting of bacterial growth on the fish, then the histidine turns into histamine. And anytime you eat something with lots of histamine, you're going to have clinical features that resemble anaphylaxis. So flushing, urticaria, burning, erythema. This can become really severe and progress to bronchospasm and you know different differing levels of edema. And so this resembles an anaphylactic reaction. So because this is due to too much histamine, the treatment is an antihistamine. So that shouldn't surprise you. You can also use things like bronchodilators and epinephrine. You basically treat scombroid poisoning just like you would any other anaphylaxis. The source is dark meat fish. Dark meat fish is where scombroid poisoning comes from. So I know this was a lot of information, a lot of fishy stuff here. Here's your summary chart. Tetrodo, I think Tetris, you need good reflexes. Sigwa, I think Sig, you open your mouth to smoke a Sig. And scombroid poisoning or histamine poisoning is due to histamine. And so it resembles 
anaphylaxis. What I want you to take away from this is the mechanism and the one key unique feature, because if you're taking your exam and they give you the mechanism or they give you that one key clinical feature, you can kind of forget all the rest of the information and, and usually get the question right. So for tetrodotoxin, decreased reflexes. For ciguatoxin, reversal of hot cold sensation. And for scombroid poisoning, anything that sounds or looks like anaphylaxis. And again, you can relate all of this to the mechanism. So in tetrodo, you have blockade of voltage-gated sodium channels, decreased depolarization, so your clinical features resemble what you might think with less action potential firing. In SIGWA, you open sodium channels, you get more depolarization, so you get weird sensations as a result of the overfiring of the action potential. That's why you get reversal of hot and cold sensation. And scombroid is literally histidine going to histamine. So too much histamine equals anaphylaxis. The last thing I'll point out is that scombroid poisoning is really the only poisoning where the treatment is not just supportive. So because it's due to elevated histamine and anaphylaxis, you treat with antihistamines, bronchodilators, and epinephrine if needed. So that's it. Good luck out there on the beach.